Um, so, I built a bench. Um, it's not really the bench itself that I want to show you. Um, I'll go through a quick rundown of just what I did to it. Um, I did not take any footage of anything, um, so this will have to suffice. Um, but we'll just go through it real quick, and then we'll get to what I really want to show you. So the bench itself is four feet by four feet. Um, the top consists of two sheets of three quarter inch MDF laminated together. Um, and then I laminated the top of that with some Formica, um, just for a clean, smooth work surface. Uh, easy to clean, easy to get glue and stuff off of, just kind of made sense to me. So the idea behind this bench was, this is the first bench I've made in my new shop. Um, and I wanted as much functionality out of this one bench because this is the bench I'm going to use to build all the rest of my shop furniture. Um, so one of the things I definitely wanted to have was a bench vise. Um, I made mine out of pipe clamps. There's plenty of videos on YouTube on how to do it. Um, but this is made out of red oak and the front piece is quarter sawn just because I had it, but it looks awesome. So the vise is three feet wide. Um, I've got just under two feet in between the pipes, but I've also got about six inches out here for any kind of other awkward um, clamping situations. But as you can see, I have the additional length of the pipe, so that gives me more room this way to clamp. But, uh, you know, for most of the time, the, the two inches of travel is, is going to be enough for most of the things you're going to do with it. So, I like the idea of that. It's flush with the top. Uh, so, there's that. Another thing I wanted to add to this bench was just power, right? Because we all need power to wherever we're working. Um, so... I found this power strip at Lowe's and I bought 25 feet of like heavy duty extension cord 14.3 um, and hardwired it to the power strip with a cord so that way I, wherever I'm working in the shop I can roll the bench to it and then plug into an outlet and have power on the bench. Like any of us that make things, um, you know, if you're going to invest that much time into building it, you want it to look good. Um, so for me, I knew that I wanted the white Formica top because um, you can see everything against white. It, it's just, to me, it makes sense. But I like the look of black and white, um, just the contrast. It looks neat and clean. So this red oak, I'll show you the products that I use to get this look with the red oak and the grain highlighting because, man, do I like that. I'm definitely going to visit that again. For anybody that's interested in that black and white uh, grain highlighting effect, these are the products that I use. They're all Minwax products. Um, I've seen some folks on YouTube that received boxes from Minwax with some of this stuff in it. Um, so I wanted to give it a try. Um, this is the wood effects and it's a charred black look. They say right on the can that it works best with oak. Um, I'm assuming red oak and white oak. They, it reacts with the tannins much the same way that you would do with steel wool and vinegar, except you don't need to take the time to make it. Somebody already did it in a higher concentration for me. After that, I moved on to the grain highlighting wax. And then after that, I went with this soft touch wax. And I really like the feel of it. Um, so anyway, some awesome Minwax products. If you're interested, that's what I used to get that look. Now you'll also notice that I inlaid some tea track on opposing sides. Um, and I'll show you why I did that in a minute. But I do want to touch on, I really like the, the color scheme that I wanted to go with. I love that there are black tea tracks out there. I found them on Amazon. Uh, with clear style tools. Go check them out. They make more stuff as well. Um, some pocket rulers, some squares, some other useful tools. Um, eventually I want to put T-Tracks in the top of this bench, but for now, this is, this is as far as I've gotten with it. Um, but I will show you why I put the T-Tracks in. Traditionally, um, 
If you have a piece of wood that you need to flat and you don't have a CNC machine, then you need to come up with some sort of rail system, right? We've all seen router sleds, that's nothing new. Um, and that wasn't the thing I wanted to tackle. What I wanted to tackle was a system to easily set up rails that were adjustable linear-wise as well as vertically. I wasn't interested in building a permanent slab flattening table because that's not part of my everyday workflow. So that's a table that you have to spend the time to build and, you know, unless it is part of your everyday workflow, more often than not, it's going to sit there and collect dust and that's not something I'm interested in as well as not taking up a footprint uh, if I don't have to. What if there was another way? So, here's what I came up with. It's a bracket. Um, this is hardwood and this is hemlock. That's just because it's the only thing I had that was thick enough and wide enough to use um, at the time. You could make that out of hardwood, although I don't think it would really matter. This is a three quarter inch pipe flange. Um, I simply have some T-bolts and knobs. You could even make those um, I was just lazy, so I bought them, so they saved me some time. Now I'll show you how they work. To use them, you just slide in the T-track. Okay, and we'll get the other side. Alright, so now that the brackets are in place, just slide in the pipe. Okay? And each flange has a set screw. Done. Done. Now, I've got linear adjustability as well as vertical adjustability. Now once you've got the brackets on and you got your pipe in, um, depending on the, the width and the thickness of whatever it is that you're going to flatten, you can adjust the first rail um, either linearly, linearly or vertically. All right, so get the first one in place. Lock one side down, put a level on it, that'll tell you which way you need to go. Get it level, and then lock the other side down. Alright, so now I have established one rail that is level this way, so now we got to put the other one on. And you go about the other side, basically the same way. Slide the pipe in, set screw, now I can bring this one, I'm just going to kind of temporarily set it there for a minute, now I can level it across this way, so this side needs to come up, quick adjustment, Lock it down. From the other side. Quick adjustment. Lock it down. Now, in theory, if I'm level this way and I'm level across with that one, this one, by default, would be level. How strong is it, you ask? I'll show you. I am 180 pounds of twisted steel and sex appeal. My brackets are locked down and it can hold me. Now if it can hold me, that's plenty strong enough for a router and a router sled to slide across. It doesn't move. Put some wax on your pipes, and router sled, just slides.
So, now that we understand how it works, let's set it up in a real world scenario and see how it performs. It just so happens that I happen to have this cookie here that I need to flatten. Uh, it's about an inch and a half off altogether, so I gotta put a lot of work into this to get this thing flat and even so that I can make a tabletop out of it. Um, so first things first, I'm gonna get it situated and hot glue it down to the table, putting uh, wedges where I need to put them. Um, and then I'll set up the rails and we'll get the router going and we'll start flattening this bad boy. can be a little deceiving but as I, I run my hands across it um, I don't feel any discernible bumps or anything at all it's it's really smooth all the way across um, so now let's check to see if it's level across in a few different ways booyah now let's check it the other way Booyah. Let's check it diagonally. Oh yeah. I didn't have any issue with these moving or these knobs loosening because of vibration. Uh, nothing at all. Uh, obviously the end product shows us that it was flat, but uh, that was a concern that maybe with a little bit of vibration these would loosen a little bit, which would throw everything off. Uh, but I got no, no issues with it. Uh, I can still hang off of it. So now I've got a lot of cleanup to do, and then I will flip it over and flatten the other side. However, this isn't really about actually flattening a slab, so I'm not going to fill the other side. Um, and I'll come back when I'm done, and I've cleaned up, and then I take apart the system, um, just so you can see how fast it comes apart. Ah, 
But now that everything's cleaned up, I'm going to go ahead and show you how I take it down and take it apart and then right back to a normal bench. That's it. Um, right back to a normal bench. I'm ready to now work on making this into a table on the bench. Um, but I hope you enjoyed the video and the system that I came up with. Um, there's no holes in the bench. It's easy to set up, easy to take down. It's fully adjustable. Um, I'm pretty stoked with it. It solves a problem for me anyway. Um, but hopefully uh, some of you out there can find it useful, especially if you have a small shop or, uh, or if you're like me and you just don't want to dedicate a whole table to flattening slabs. Um, this is a system that you can incorporate into your existing workbench or if you're planning on building a new bench, something to keep in mind. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and uh, that's it. Till next time.